OK. So we've been spending a lot of time looking at this controllability uh, matrix of this system, this linear system, x dot equals ax plus bu. We know some things about this. So we know that, for example, in MATLAB, if I look at the rank of this controllability matrix, rank of CTRB of a comma b, if this is rank n, so CTRB just gives me this matrix, if the rank of this is n, the dimension of my state space, then the system's controllable which is great, OK? But that is a binary condition. That is a yes or a no. It is controllable completely, or it's not controllable, and we don't know in what way it's not controllable. This is purely a binary rank condition. But in practice, there are much richer and more useful measures of controllability. So how controllable are different directions in Rn? And we can get those by looking at things like uh, the singular value decomposition of this matrix, or something called the controllability Gramian. OK, so I'm going to write down a few things um, that we're going to relate. So first of all, we know that the solution of the system x dot equals ax, um, if we just had an initial condition, we would have x of t equals e to the matrix a t times x at time 0. OK, so in the absence of control, then we would just have this uh, e to the at times initial condition. And now, in the absence of an initial condition, if we just had control, we would also get this plus integral from 0 to t, e to the a t minus tau times b u of tau d tau. OK? And for those of you who have dealt with um, impulse responses and linear systems before, you'll recognize that this is the convolution of e to the at with our input u. So essentially, this e to the at is kind of a kernel, and we're sliding our control input u across that kernel and convolving. But we'll, we'll get into that later on when we talk about the equivalence of uh, state space differential equations with impulse response convolution representations and transfer functions. So that's down the road. We'll talk about the convolution interpretation. But I just want you to know that there is an expression for the solution x of t that solves this. And it's essentially the convolution integral of e to the at with uh, u tau, with ut. Okay, And there's something really, really important called uh, the controllability Gramian. Okay, so uh, the controllability Gramian, and I hope I'm not misspelling this. There's also something called the observability Gramian when we start doing measurements, but we'll do, deal with that later. So the, the controllability Gramian is this object wt equals integral uh, from 0 to t. Sometimes this is from 0 to infinity, um, e to the a tau b times b, I'm going to say transpose. Sometimes people do complex conjugate transpose, but I'm going to start with real valued a's and b's. If these were complex, this would be a star, times e to the a transpose tau d tau. OK, so this is the time t Gramian. Oftentimes, we, we take t goes to infinity, and we look at the infinite time Gramian. But for now, let's just look at this object. And something I think is really important, so this was a lesson I was taught early on, um, is you should always think, when you're working with a mathematical object, you should always think to yourself, what am I and where do I live? OK, so this is the controllability Gramian. And it lives in R n by n. This is an n by n matrix. OK, so this is easy to verify. e to the at is an n by n square matrix. B, B transpose. So if I have this like column vector, column vectors in B, and I multiply it by column vectors in B transpose, the outer dimensions are both n. So I get an n by n square matrix. And then e to the a transpose t is also an n by n square matrix. So long story short, this Gramian is an n by n matrix. And because it's, uh, in this case, real valued and symmetric, we know that it's going to have uh, positive real eigenvalues. And so I look at the eigen decomposition of this object. If I look at wt c equals lambda c, 
then essentially I have, I can list, I can order these eigenvalues of this Gramian from biggest eigenvalue down to smallest eigenvalue. They're all non-negative. So there's a biggest one down to a smallest one. And the eigenvectors corresponding to the biggest eigenvalues are the most controllable directions in state space. Let me say that again. The eigenvectors of this Gramian that have the biggest eigenvalue are the most controllable directions in state space, meaning I can go farther in those directions on the same amount of input energy, or let's say, I, let's say that this is a gallon of, I have a gallon of gas of input energy. I can go farther in the directions with bigger lambda than I can in the directions with smaller lambda. This is really cool, okay? And so, in lots of circumstances, I haven't told you why that's true or how you would compute this. For discrete time systems, oftentimes, this is approximately equal to this controllability matrix times the controllability matrix transpose. So that's also an n by n matrix you can verify. Um, or like this impulse response matrix where I kick the system and I measure it for a long time. This is almost equal to this. And I'm gonna, we're going to have a whole lecture on this down the road where we talk about these empirical Gramians that we measure from impulse response data. And we're going to talk about these eigenvectors in much, much more detail. I'm just giving you the high level overview. But you'll notice that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix are the singular vectors and singular values of C. So what I could do is I could look at U uh, sigma V equals SVD of this controllability matrix. And in practice, I'm going to say I want the economy SVD. Okay, so in MATLAB, this is literally what I would type in. I would type in the SVD of this controllability matrix. And what I'm going to get, so now the biggest eigenvalues here are my singular values squared, I think. Okay, so I still get this hierarchy now of singular values in this diagonal matrix sigma. And then the eigenvectors C are my left singular vectors. They're the columns of U. And so now this is really, really cool. Instead of just a binary yes or no, my system is controllable, now I actually get an ordered list of directions that are most controllable. So the first column of U is the most controllable direction. The second column is the second most controllable direction, all the way down to the least controllable direction. This is just simple matrix algebra in MATLAB. It's one line. And then what you can do is essentially take these, these controllable directions, and what they define is some energy ellipsoid. So this is really neat. I want to just draw, um, I'm going to draw this in R3, but you'll get the idea. So what I can do is draw this energy ellipsoid in R3, where essentially my most controllable direction, so let's say I go in the C1 direction, so this is C1 uh, lambda 1 or sigma 1, whatever you want to call it, I can go farther, so, so this ellipsoid, the axes, the principal axes of this are my singular vectors of this controllability matrix. So this is uh, lambda 1, C1, this might be, uh, this might be lambda 2, C2, and this one might be lambda 3, C3. And what this means is that for a unit of, of input energy, let's say I've got one gallon of gas, I've got one unit of energy I can input, so if I norm U of T and it equals 1, this is literally how, this is the surface of how far I can go in any direction. So I can steer my system around, but I can steer it farther if I go just in the C1 direction. I can steer it less far in the C2 direction, and I can, I can drive it the least far in the C3 direction. And if I go in some combination, I'm going to land at that point on this ellipsoid. So if I go in some direction here, I'm going to hit I'm going to run out of gas at that point. So this is incredibly physical and intuitive, okay? So 
it's controllability is not just a yes or a no decision. There are degrees of controllability, and they're different in different directions of my state space. And all of us know this. If you're driving a car, it's easy to go forward, right? The wheels are aligned forward. I can go forward really easily. It's hard to kind of parallel park. Okay, so parallel parking is harder to do than going forward. And in lots of control systems, some directions are easy to go in and others are harder to go in. And you find those directions by taking the singular value decomposition of your controllability matrix. Equiv so this is the easy way to do it in MATLAB. Mathematically, those are the eigenvectors of this controllability Gramian. We haven't really talked about what this is yet. Um, but this is a very, very uh, physically motivated quantity, so the eigenvectors have meaning. In fact, they have exactly this meaning. They, they tell you how far you can, can go on a unit normed input u. Okay? Extremely useful um, and also extremely easy to compute in MATLAB. Good. So one last thing I want to I want to get to, and I think we're kind of just very um, gradually working up to this is x might be a vector in a very high dimensional state space. So this might be a million dimensional state space describing the fluid flow over you know, a Boeing jet wing or something like that. So this could be an extremely complicated state of all of the fluid velocities at a million locations. This could be some linearization, for example, about some laminator, laminar boundary layer profile. And the idea here is it is too much to ask, necessarily, for all of Rn to be controllable. So for example, in that, uh, in that fluid example, let's say I have, um, I've got you know, flow past my wing. And let's say that it's doing something. It's got some dynamics, right? Maybe it's doing a little vortex shedding. So Controllability in all of Rn means that I, have, I can control my system so that I can control the vorticity here, or here, or here. And to some extent, I don't need full Rn controllability. I just need to be able to control the things that I'm likely to see in my system, the, the coherent structures that if I, if I just measured my system, what would be in the data? Okay, what would exist in my data? What impacts lift and drag or my control objective? Okay. And so the idea here is many, many, many directions in Rn are extremely stable. So if I have a big disturbance here, like a really big vortex or some, some disturbance, what's probably going to happen is that that's going to die out really quickly. It's going to get like blended in to this dominant uh, pattern. So there's going to be some very, very stable directions here that I don't care about. So Oftentimes, what we really care about is something called stabilizability. And I'm doubting I'm going to spell this one right. But a system is stabilizable if all of its unstable directions are controllable. So if I look at this controllable subspace given by the singular vectors of this matrix, I want all of my unstable directions, all of the unstable eigenvectors of A. So it's stabilizable. It's stabilizable if and only if all unstable uh, eigenvectors of A are in my controllable subspace meaning are in the column space of this controllability matrix. If all of my unstable eigenvectors of A are in this controllable subspace, then I'm stabilizable. Okay, so I might not be able to control all of Rn, but everything that's unstable I can control. And I, this is the normal definition, but I think a much more useful definition is that if all unstable and lightly damped so it doesn't, strictly speaking, have to be just unstable. If there's something that's kind of marginally stable or barely stable, I also want that to be in my controllable subspace so that I can make it more stable. Okay? So in really high dimensional systems, 
again, we're looking at degrees of controllability, and we're looking at degrees of controllability in special directions in Rn. So if there is an unstable eigenvector of A or a very lightly damped, you know, an eigenvector with a lightly damped eigenvalue, I really want that to be highly controllable. So I want to choose my actuators B so that the unstable dynamic directions correspond to big singular vectors of this controllability matrix. Okay, again, we'll talk more about this later. We'll talk about this in the context of model reduction, of how we take this million dimensional system and get a low order model that we can use for real time control, but that's all going to come later. Okay, thank you.